Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Blitz Grow. Super excited to have you here. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe and let us know how much these episodes are helping you out with your business. Today, uh, we have an awesome guest. Uh, we have Adam from Super Green Tonic. He has a super interesting story about how he created a product from his own need and situation. The super important thing to do is build a product that everybody needs, which Adam's going to go through. He also uh, did this in the supplement space, which is a little bit of a competitive space. So we're going to go through the strategies and the tactics he used and worked to go from zero to six figures. So Adam, thank you so much for joining and really excited to jump into this. Yeah. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Great to be on here. Uh, so I love to start every episode with what's your elevator pitch to someone you meet at like a conference, an event, or how do you introduce yourself? How do you sort of sum up your your value and yourself in in two sentences. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I I struggled with what to what to say to introduce myself. I always I always used to say I was self unemployed, <laughs> or I'm, I'm unemployable. But uh, yeah, I mean I I'm a, a founder of, of a supplement company and uh, an expat. I actually live in Malaysia. I'm obviously from the UK, but my family we, and I we moved to Malaysia about six years ago and actually founded the company in the US. So it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting is one word. Challenging is probably more uh, like it. You know, being uh, an expat in one country with a company in another country that sells also to, well, globally uh, has been challenging, especially like the US, like setting up everything there. And, and, the, time, mm -hmm. and the time difference, as you know, you've uh, kindly uh, stayed stayed up later to do this podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I think uh, we might also touch on that as well because there might be some other expats or definitely people who have moved countries recently um, and how do you kind of navigate that? Because I know it's tough with your citizenship, your bank accounts and all that sort of stuff, but we won't dive into that stuff just yet. Um, we want to hear a little bit more about the founding story. So, you know, how did you start Super Green Tonic? How did you uh, validate the product and the idea uh, what was kind of like the first few weeks of uh, the company looking like? Yeah, I mean, the I guess the the uh, the reason I set up the product actually is because I wanted to take it. I, I was researching different greens products, and the great I mean, there's many great things about living in Malaysia. The the downside is actually a lot of the meals don't have uh, that many vegetables in there unless you go for particular vegetable dishes. So I found that I wasn't really, even though I was eating very well, probably too much, <laughs> I was not getting all the greens and all the nutrients I needed. So I thought, well, the greens powders, I've heard of these. Obviously, there's some big players in the space. So I tried a number of products and, and they were really expensive to get here. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. yeah, if I'm going to spend this sort of money, I want to make sure it's the best product I, I can try. And there was always something missing in the products I tried, whether it's cost, the ingredients, proprietary blends, etc. So you don't know really what's in it. So I thought, well, I have some experience with supplement clients in the past. So I thought, let's let's just create one. So I mm. basically I researched. I did a lot of research in terms of what ingredients could be a good fit, and actually, really, what what I wanted in my product. I, I, I basically was designing a product for myself. So it had mm. you know greens, immune ingredients, and nootropics. So that's that's really what I wanted in there. And we, we spent some time uh, just speaking with manufacturers in the US. And, and actually, we decided to do it in the US because of that confidence, really. Uh, we're, in, we're in Asia, and although the manufacturing costs could be a lot cheaper here, I wanted to really produce it in the US, knowing that we could sell it worldwide if it was a mm. product that yeah, had legs. So we, yeah, we went through three or four different companies to get quotes. So then we worked with them to refine a formula that would taste pretty good and also would tick the box in terms of what I wanted in there. And then we did a sort of a minimum run, really, a minimum con for contract manufacturing. It's sort of 1,500 to 2,000 units as a, as a starting point. So it's a bit of investment. I mean... At the start, I probably put in, yeah, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Just uh, that's, you know, for, for the product and also some other work around, you know, in terms of the design. Because uh, my background is web development, but it's not really design. So we had some help there. 
And yeah, uh, and originally it was, it was a case of, right, let's see, let's see if this is a business that actually commercially works. If not, I've got 1500 tubs to drink, to drink over the next few years. <laughs> Good fallback plan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll be giving a lot of presents away. Yeah. <laughs> Super green tonic. And actually, nice. yeah, that, that's how it started. I mean, I, I'd already started blogging about greens products and about being an expat and being self unemployed in Malaysia. So I, I grew a little bit of an audience or a bit of SEO related traffic around this. So mm-hmm. I looked at it that I was 50% sure or 50% or more sure that I would make sales. The real question was how many and would it be actually a sustainable business? But how long were you building your audience for prior to the product launch? And then, you know, what sort of volume of traffic were you getting before that? Just so people have a bit of a benchmark to figure out like how much traffic they should get to before they start trying to sell a product to them. Sure. I mean, the blog I set up actually wasn't, it wasn't meant to be commercial. So there was no commercial intent on the blog. It was just actually, I, I decided to take a year out and as well as getting fat sitting by the swimming pool, I thought I need to do something productive. Otherwise I'm going to just, yeah, I'm going to struggle to get back into work. So I just sort of started blogging three or four times a week. And my writing sucks, so I found it hard, and it, it, it still sucks, but a little bit less. Um, so yeah, I was doing three or four blog posts around one to two thousand words in length, and it was very random. They, like initially, it wasn't talking about nutrition, although I started to test different products. I mean, like the ring, um, you know, we ch- tested that out, I tested other products that I found interesting. And that's how I first got into the greens uh, supplements. So actually at this, at that time, I think I was blogging for a good, actually before I even talked about anything greens related, it was a six or seven months into the blog. Uh, And actually one thing I, I did that really helped with the blog is doing the interviews. And actually I did it old school rather than the, the, the video, podcast now this was all written you know google docs send it to to a friend or someone i just met say hey can i interview you and i did that to a few people that quite know well known in the digital marketing space and so the blog got well got a good spike in traffic from that and i still use that tactic now actually i interview people you know to get uh, seo traffic from their their sort of brand or their name for people that are interested, it, it it allows me to get to know someone a bit better as well. If I want to work with them, it also means it's a bit of exposure for the person, obviously that we're interviewing and and the traffic and traffic to the blog gets a little spike, which we know Google loves that. So, yeah. And so the main strategy for recruiting is just finding sites that would be a good fit and then doing cold outreach. Is that the main strategy or have you found any other successful ways of getting affiliates? That, that's what we've been doing. I mean, I've got a few other friends that have brands. And so we, we've talked together and said, well, like, if you've got any affiliates that would be a good fit, if you can mention us, we can do likewise. So that that's helped. Yeah, that's helped. And yeah, otherwise it's just, yeah, like, like you said, cold, or cold outreach. And it, the thing is, it's, it's also... A case of the more successful we get and more visibility we get, obviously we'll have affiliates then applying to us. Now, now we use uh, Reversion as an affiliate platform and we're on the marketplace. So we've actually had quite an influx since sort of January of affiliates applying. And yeah, it, it's, it's good, although we've yet to sort of find that affiliates have actually sort of sent as much traffic of the ones that signed up or, you know, from the marketplace that it's the ones that we've proactively gone out to, to recruit that have actually helped. Mm. Um, yeah. Again, that 80, 20 rule, isn't it? It's just yeah. like, you know, 80, 80% of your affiliates are not going to drive any traffic. It's really the top 20% that do everything. Exactly. If you were starting a supplement company today, what are some quick tips that you can give people to avoid nightmares or headaches uh, with starting a supplement company? 
Uh, what are some things you would avoid or some, some hard lessons you learned? Uh, I mean, it's a lot easier if you do the white label stuff. So if, if you went with the approach of, I've got an angle that I'd like to test, you know, I'm, I'm going to try like say new tropics to, you know, 60 year olds or, you know, a particular angle and you think, right, I, I, I know there's a product I can buy off the shelf. I can buy a hundred units or 50 units and just give it a try. And then it's about the, the branding and, and obviously the marketing. See, I, I thought about doing that at the start. I thought, you know, if I just put up a page, you know, just market and just do some advertising, let's just see. But I, I actually, for me, I know that cause paid mark, paid marketing isn't my thing. I'm slowly, still, still trying to get my head around it. And we've talked about that before. And so I think I would have given up if it would, if I'd have taken that approach because the whole point of why I did the product is because I wanted to take it and, and 99 out of a hundred of the white label products I wouldn't take because it, it wouldn't, wouldn't have the dosages or the ingredients I wanted in it. So that wouldn't have been sort of congruent for me to market in that way. But if, if you were purely looking at it from a marketing perspective, you wouldn't do it the way I did it because <laughs> it's too long. It just takes too long. You're investing not so change into it, you know, a year of your life and 60, 70 K minimum. So, so you wouldn't do it that way, but yeah, you can, there are so many sort of manufacturers now that, you know, private label and, and, and they're decent manufacturers. It's just the product is, you know, they manufacture thousands of these same, same, uh, ingredient profile, uh, supplements, and you can just put your branding on there. You can go to Upwork, get a decent you know, label done or logo, and, and you can build a website out, uh, fairly cheaply. You know, there's, there's companies now that are dedicated to doing these sort of more landing page style e-commerce, uh, sites rather than the traditional Shopify sites. And, and you just do that and you would, you would try and actually uh, we're doing some Pinterest stuff at the moment, which is interesting because Pinterest are really pushing uh, e-commerce now. And so we have uh, well, a friend of mine, he's managing that uh, for us. So that's interesting. I mean, it's early days, but the the cost is a lot cheaper on Pinterest. Yeah. So that's, that, that's interesting. It's something I never would have looked at before. And so that, that, things like this, I, I, would, uh, I would try. The, the influencer route, I know a lot of people say, that this is the this is a good solution for sort of getting getting the product it hasn't worked for us uh, obviously i mean our product isn't a cheap product so to actually even to produce it's not cheap so actually sending out thousands of tubs to influencers it's a tough one we're going to have such a high conversion rate for us to make that work uh, and find if it didn't <laughs> so yeah yeah Hey guys, we put a bunch of effort into making great content for this YouTube channel. So please hit subscribe, uh, leave us a comment, hit like, and tell a few friends about it.